Have you ever wondered what's happening inside your brain when you're practicing mountain bike skills? Today, we're diving into the neuroscience of skills training. We'll talk about why many riders are stuck in fake progress versus real progress, and why skills training is such a powerful, yet extremely underestimated way to improve not just your riding, but also your brain health and mood, especially as an adult and especially at an advanced age. And let me share a short spoiler. No, you're not too old to learn new skills. Actually, the older you are, the more important it is. So let's break it down. Hi, I'm Roxy. And as a graduate neuromental trainer, which is a complicated sounding yet official term for a coaching method based on neuroscience, I know that skills training is not only vastly misunderstood, but also underrated and often wrongly practiced. Let's be honest, most riders believe skills training is all about attending a single day skills clinic, watching YouTube tutorials, or even just riding and practicing as they go. While it is true that spending time on the bike will lead to improvement, this approach misses the essence of real skills development, which is to be made with structured, consistent off-trail practice over time. Think of it this way. Musicians don't just perfect their craft by performing on stage, do they? No, they spend countless hours in the practice room. Similarly, as mountain bikers, we should dedicate time to intentional practice sessions, our version of the practice room, to not only dramatically improve our skills, but also to boost our brain health. In this video, I'll show you why structured practice is such a game changer, especially if you're an adult rider or learning at an advanced age, not only for your ride, but for your brain health. To make it easier, I've broken this video down into four sections. Section one, let's look at what exactly happens in an adult brain during motor learning, AKA skills practice. Four things happen in your brain. One, neuroplasticity. Two, gray matter growth. Three, synaptic pruning and strengthening. And four, improved coordination between brain regions. Let's look at these four in detail now. One, learning skills is an example of neuroplasticity, as in your brain adapts. Simply put, neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections as a reaction to a challenge. And yes, this is possible until old age. How does it work? When you practice a skill, the motor cortex, the basal ganglia and cerebellum work together to refine movement patterns. Repeated practice strengthens these neural pathways, making movements more efficient and automatic. Why is this important? Well, you'll need less strength, less concentration, and you can ride longer and harder trails with more confidence. Two, gray matter growth. Learning new motor skills increases gray matter density in areas of the brain responsible for movement, coordination, and spatial awareness such as the motor cortex and the hippocampus. Three, synaptic pruning and strengthening. The brain prunes, so eliminates, unused neural pathways and strengthens those activated during skills practice. This makes your nervous system more efficient over time. Four, improved coordination between brain regions. Motor learning involves coordinations between sensory input and motor output. And it also trains decision-making areas of the brain, improving overall cognitive efficiency, not just on the trails, but also in everyday life. In short, as we age, our body and brain naturally deteriorate, but motor learning stops many of these processes and can actually reverse them. Next, let's look at how skills practice can reduce depression and anxiety. Dr. Wendy Suzuki, a renowned neuroscientist, author of this book, which I can truly recommend and 
I'll probably record a separate video about it in the future, emphasizes the profound impact of physical activity and learning on mental health. Practicing and improving mountain bike skills is a natural way to boost your mood by releasing, by releasing endorphins, dopamine, and serotonin, the brain's powerful feel-good neurotransmitters. In other words, you're essentially getting high on your own supplies. And here's how that works. When you focus on a specific goal and break it down into small achievable steps, your brain rewards each little win with a dose of those feel-good chemicals. This is why a methodical, proven approach tailored for adults is so super important. Without it, skills practice can quickly become pretty frustrating if you don't see progress. But with the right strategy, every improvement becomes a celebration, keeping you motivi motivated, happy, and actually hungry for more. Additionally, if you shift your focus to the process rather than just the outcome, by rewarding yourself for the effort you put in rather than solely the progress you make, you can effectively biohack your brain to release more of these endorphins. And these endorphins not only serve as natural motivators, keeping you engaged and excited about practicing, but they also accelerate your improvement and they provide lots of mental health benefits. So embracing this mindset transforms the journey itself into a source of joy and growth. Here's one more advantage of skills practice and how it can prevent dementia, depression, and anxiety. Focusing on precise movements during your practice encourages mindfulness, helping to calm the brain and to reduce overthinking, anxiety, and depressive symptoms because you're focused on the now and you'll gain confidence as you progress and you'll start to trust yourself more, which are all related to reducing depressive symptoms and ruminating. Thirdly, regular physical and cognitive activity reduces cortisol, that's the stress hormone, which is often elevated in people with anxiety and depression. And lastly, motor learning triggers the release of BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is a protein that promotes the survival and growth of neurons and new neurons. So BDNF is associated with improved mood and cognitive function, and it acts as a natural antidepressant. So let's move on to section three. Now that you know the benefits of skills practice, how can you leverage these advantages of skills training? I'll give you four actionable tools for faster and safe skills progress and even more brain health. Tool number one is deliberate incremental practice. Adults especially must engage in designated technique-oriented skills practice, not just writing or sessioning sections, instead deliberately spending time to build skills by following structured progressive skills training. Like for example, the drills in my home training courses. And if you want to see how this works, I have a free course for you right here, and it's also linked below. The thing is, most YouTube videos and tutorials, and even many coaches, focus on breaking down the final skill, but they often skip a crucial step. Chunking the final skill into small achievable mini goals. And as you already know, these mini goals are essential for triggering the release of those feel-good endorphins that we talked about earlier. So if you jump straight to practicing the end goal, frustration is almost inevitable. It's like trying to climb a ladder where the rungs are too far apart. Without smaller, manageable steps, it's easy to feel stuck. On the other hand, when the ladder has plenty of closely spaced steps, each one becomes a small win that builds confidence and keeps you moving upward. And that's the key to effective skills practice. Here's another super popular trap. Many writers will say, oh, I'll just go practice on the trail and they'll keep sessioning a section until they clear it. And now let me explain why that is a trap. 
when you repeatedly session sections on a trail, you might feel like you're improving as you eventually clear that section. And this is a great example for fake progress versus true progress. Why so? Because, I mean, it does feel like we're improving, right? Well, the external results, like clearing that section, can trick us into thinking our skills are getting better. In reality, we're often compensating with physical strength or better trail awareness, but not really improved foundational technique. And that's exactly why practicing off the trail with a technique-oriented approach, where the focus is on how you execute a movement, will accelerate progress immensely. Don't worry, you'll take it to the trails later on. It allows you to isolate and refine those critical movement patterns in a safe and controlled environment. Not only is this approach far safer, but it also prevents fake progress. And it builds true, reliable skills that will translate effectively and safely on the trail. Tool number two is consistency over duration. So short, frequent practice sessions are far more effective for retaining skills than occasional lengthy ones. And that's why I designed my free track stand course to challenge you to practice just 10 minutes twice a week because the goal is to help you form a realistic and sustainable practice habit. Because steady and consistent effort leads to much, much greater progress over time than an overly ambitious and, well, yeah, short-lived practice spree. So you can start for free today and see how small steps make a big difference. Tool number three is mental engagement and harnessing frustration. To truly accelerate your progress, it's not just about practicing. It's about how you practice. By focusing on clear, specific micro goals, you activate key neurotransmitters like dopamine and acetylcholine. Dopamine is your brain's motivational driver, giving you that push to keep going, and acetylcholine plays a different but equally important role. When you fail, and then you embrace the challenge, acetylcholine acts like a mental highlighter, pinpointing the areas in your brain that need to change and adapt. This process creates a powerful cycle. Each small success boosts dopamine, reinforcing motivation, and each failure, embraced, sharpens your brain focus, paving the way for accelerated progress. This positive feedback loop, feedback loop also it releases more of those feel-good hormones we talked about earlier, and this keeps you engaged and excited to practice. So remember, it's not just that you practice, it's how you practice. That guarantees consistent improvement. Tool number four, celebrate small wins. Every new skill mastered reinforces the brain's reward pathways. This increases enjoyment and motivation. So you really need to savor your progress and you really need to focus on far on how far you've already come again a methodical approach like the one you'll get on my free track sound course and my other courses really makes this easy for you because complex skills are broken down into tiny steps that are manageable like manageable chunks to enable motivating you along the way which as you already know is absolutely essential for your brain Section four, let's sum this up. How does skills training help enjoy mountain biking until old age? Well, one, preservation of physical skills. Regular motor skills practice ensures that coordination, balance, and reflexes remain sharp into older age, allowing riders to confidently, and most importantly, safely navigate trails, even technical ones. Actually, the ones you never thought you could. I already have dozens of clients aged 60, 70, or even older sending me messages squealing with joy about writing sections they never ever thought possible. Two, maintenance of cognitive function. Continuous engagement in skill-based activities keeps your brain agile and it reduces or even reverses cognitive decline. Three, injury prevention. Improved technique, 
through skills like braking effectively, being able to dismount safely, even in steeps, control in steep, reduces the likelihood of crashes. It also makes riding more efficient and less physically demanding, allowing you to enjoy longer rides and to continue riding confidently well into older age. And number four, increased confidence, my favorite. Mastering skills provides a sense of accomplishment, making you feel capable and like super motivated to continue riding and continue learning. Five, social and psychological benefits. If you practice with my drills and join the Roxy Bike practice community, and especially if you practice with your partner or with your friends, these social interactions reduce feelings of isolation. And this is crucial for mental health. Also, new skills are simply pretty cool <laughs> and it'll be easier to join group rides if you feel confident and if you ride more technical trails safer. So to sum it up, mountain bike skills training is a unique combination of physical exercise and cognitive stimulation. It makes mountain biking not only safer, but also much more enjoyable and much less physically demanding. And also it rejuvenates your brain. While simply riding is fun and also important, supplementing your rides with designated practice sessions will not only improve your brain health, but also your confidence. And it will literally make you a safer and better rider. Here's the catch. Only riding on trails often gives us the illusion of improving skills. While you may develop better line choice, anticipation of overall strength, all of which are valuable and contribute to performance, chances are high that you're unintentionally reinforcing flawed movement patterns. These incorrect habits usually go unnoticed until they lead to stagnation, frustration, or even crashes. By that point, however, these habits are deeply ingrained and they're super hard to correct. The solution, engage in regular, technique-oriented and focused practice. This way adults not only become better riders, but also lay the groundwork for long-term brain health, emotional resilience, and the ability to enjoy mountain biking for years to come, like well into older age. And if you're ready to take your skills to the next level, then start with my free track stand course by clicking the link right here or in the description below. It's a simple but effective way to begin your structured practice journey. Let me know if you found this helpful by dropping a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Much love, Roxy.